welcome to Jesus is an Answer telecast this evening. My name is Reverend Jennifer Osborne. Thank you so much for turning your attention to this station. The topic of my discussion this evening is just simply asking some hard questions. And a hard question today we're going to ask is concerning our families, our roots, and where we come from. My text comes from the book of Judges, chapter 6 through 8, and it's the story of the patriarch Gideon, the judge. Gideon was a fifth judge, and most of us are very acquainted with the story of Gideon and how the Lord used Gideon to save Israel. The book of Judges was written from 1300 to 1050 BC, according to Bible scholars. To whom? The book of Judges was written to the nation of Israel. It was written by the prophet Samuel. The theme of the book of Judges is compromise and confusion. Judges was called a book of defeat because of the paganism and the idolatry, the worship of worshiping of idols that the nation of Israel allowed themselves to be involved in. And before I get into the text of today, I'm just going to have a word of prayer. Would you bow your hearts with me? Lord, we thank you so much. We praise you. We thank you for this opportunity to come before your people, O oh God. We ask for your anointing, O oh God, which will break every yoke of bondage in the lives of those who are, have tuned in to this telecast, God. We pray that your word will go forth unchecked by every God, every spirit that's not of Christ, O oh God. God, we render Satan harmless, ineffective, and null and void. Lord, I loose your ministers and spirits to go out concern this matter. In Jesus' name, God. We thank you for your anointing, God. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Gideon was the fifth judge of Israel. This is shortly after the children of Israel occupied the land coming out of Egypt. And the Lord had given them in the land after Joshua's victory. And here are the Israelites settled in their land now. And the Lord had given a command to the Israelites to not to be a part of the worship that the people in that land were doing. They were pagans. They were idolatrous. So the Lord told Israel to not only not being involved, be involved with this nation of people, all the people who are committing this idolatry, but actually get rid of those people out of their land. So at this point in history, Israel was delivered into the hands of the Midianites. This is a nation the Lord allowed to come in and to take whatever goods Israel had because they had broken their covenant, their relationship with the Lord. They had agreed with the Lord that they would serve him, that they would not serve the pagan gods. But here Israel, they were, became idolatrous along with the pagan nations that the Lord warned them to stay away from in this area. So at this point in history, the Lord delivered Israel for seven years into the hands of the Midianites. And the, the Israel cried out to the Lord and asked the Lord for deliverance. So the Lord found somebody to send their deliverance through. And he chose a young man named Gideon. Gideon's name, as a matter of fact, ne means destroyer. That's one of his names, color of woods. But Gideon was a man of God, yet the relatives, he, his relatives were pagan worshipers. They were Baal worshipers. He was connected to a group of people who worshiped Baal. The Lord called Gideon to save this nation. The Lord saw his heart and the Lord chose him. At this point, Gideon was a very discouraged young man. That's why he answered the angel and said, well, if God is with my people, why are we suffering? Why are we going through this? He asked the Lord some really tough questions. Gideon was very discouraged when the angel of the Lord came to him at this point. A lot of people say Gideon was a little scaredy cat, but God, he was discouraged at this point. The Lord had to speak encouragement into Gideon. 
Have you ever been in a situation where you're going through a whole bunch of stuff? Are you, have you ever spoken to people who share with you how much pain that they have had in their life? And you wonder, did you? And I have. And I used to ask people, like, well, did you ask the Lord, why are you going through all this suffering? And people sometimes would tell me that, no, I don't ask God why. Some people would share with me and say, why not? I know that sounds religious or, and everything, but Gideon, he asked the Lord this hard question. Why are we suffering? The Lord, you call me. You tell me now you're with me. You're calling me to do this task. But if you're with me, why have we been suffering all this long? If indeed you are with me, it's, it's kind of hard to reconcile at this point, you being with us and that we're suffering. You hand us to the hand of the Midianites and they're doing all this for us. They ravish us. The Midianites were nomadic people. They were actually relatives of the Israelites through Abraham. Abraham married another woman after the death of Sarah. Her name was Keturah. So the Midianites were actually offsprings of Keturah and Abraham. So they were distant relatives of Israel, but they were pagan worshipers. We first learn about them in Exodus when Moses escaped from the Egyptians. He went to the land of Midian and he actually married a Midianite woman. But at this point in history, after the Israelites left Egypt, they're in this new land, the land of promise that the Lord gave to them, the land of promise that Joshua, the patriarch, fought for, for them to have. And they promised God that they will keep covenant with them, they'll keep an agreement with them that not to serve those gods that the other nations were serving. They're, he was going to be their true God. So they went back on their promise. So now they're in bondage for doing so. And at this point, the Lord sent Gideon to help them out. So at this point in history, Gideon is very discouraged. He, he sees what his people is going through. He sees what his family is going through. Gideon is hiding food from the Midianites who come into their land and ravish it. Every time they plant something, they come and take everything the Midians have. So Gideon at this point, he's, he's discouraged. And he's threshing, um, he's in a wine press and he's trying to separate wheat in a wine press because he's trying to hide it from these people who are coming in their land. And this is where at this point the Lord reaches out to him and says, I'm sending you to save your nation now. And he's not sure about that. He said, well, we are suffering. You say you're with me, but that's hard for me to really reconcile right now because I'm suffering. Have you ever been in this situation, I'm talking to especially Christians now, that you're going through so much in your life. You know that you're a believer in God. You did all that you can to work out your salvation. You know you're obedient for the most part, but yet you're suffering and you're wondering, well, if the Lord is really with me, why am I suffering? And a lot of Christians and a lot of people I talk to, they won't, they, they've told me that we don't ask the Lord anything. And I was one of those persons at one point, I, you know, I would go through suffering in certain areas and I would not ask the Lord. You know, I actually blame myself, I guess. At some point, said, so, well, maybe I did this thing and did this thing, and the Lord hasn't really, really forgiven me. But what I want to discuss with today, the topic, as I said before, is asking the hard questions, some hard questions. I had to ask the Lord why. Why was I experiencing defeat like Gideon? in some areas of my life when I was serving you. You called me to go to ministry. You confirmed that you called me to ministry. You sent me to seminary. But even going through seminary and going through my ministerial preparation, I was still suffering in certain areas and I was not getting the victory. And sometimes I had to wonder, well, if the Lord, I know he's with me, he's confirmed that I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to help people and I, I'm going to help people get their deliverance in certain area. But you know, I'm suffering in this particular area like Gideon. It's just very hard to reconcile. But the Lord had to impress on my heart that Jennifer, you've been linked to some generation curses. But we were, Gideon was a man of God, but his father 
is Father Joash was an idolater. So you can be suffering and going through things, and it's not known so much because of you and the sin you're committed, but sins that were committed by your ancestors or who you're linked to. The children of Israel at this point in history, they are pagan worshipers. Gideon was a man of God, but he was surrounded, his nation, he was surrounded by pagan worshipers. Some of them were his family members. So whatever defeat that was coming in this group because of their actions, it was affecting Gideon too, even though he was a man of God. And, so, and here we are as Christians. We could be suffering, and it has nothing to do with the personal sin that we're going through, but generational curses. I want to talk about generational curses and links and cycles, as some people call it tonight. Whenever you go to the doctor, the medical profession knows this already. Whenever you go to the doctor for an examination, they always ask you, anybody in your family had cancer? Anybody had a stroke? Who, who had this? Who had that? The, the medical profession knows that already, that these are generational cycles, and they can pa be passed down from generation to generation. But a lot of people don't ask the other questions about who had several divorces, who had poverty from one generation to another? Why is poverty still in my family line? Why in there some family, two, three generations have been in prison? The father, the grandfather, the brother, and the sister. That's a generation cycle right there. It's not just in the area of health. It's also in the area of there's some families. Nobody in the family gets married. And it's a generational cycle. The Bible tells us that a curse, it doesn't come without a cause. And in some cases, things that are afflicting us now, it was due to something that happened through our ancestral line. Doors may have been open in areas that it's affecting us, even though that we weren't involved in those different things that our ancestors might have been involved in. They might have been involved in paganism. They might have done certain things. And in doing so, that opens door, open doors that certain things will come on us and follow us down through the generational line, not just sickness. It could be poverty. It could be suicide. It could be oppression. It could be murder. In some families, there's actually a murdering spirits. You, there's some family with several people in, the, in that generation has murdered people. Habits, drug addiction, so on and so forth. Those, a lot of those come in generational cycles. So we're talking about generational curses today. Gideon was a man of God, but yet he was suffering because of what his ancestors had done. He was suffering because of the family he was linked to. So today, I'm encouraging you today. Gideon was very discouraged at this point when the Lord called and spoke to him and said, you're a mighty man. God had to really speak encouragement into Gideon because he, was so, he felt so defeated at this point. A lot of people look at Gideon and say, oh, he was just like a little scaredy cat and everything. But the Bible said he was a brave man. But at this point, Gideon was very discouraged. He was serving the Lord, but yet he was experiencing defeat defeat on all sides. So he had to really question God. Gideon wasn't sure that God was with him. Gideon oftentimes asked the Lord if he continued to read in Judges, Judges, excuse me, chapter 6 going on to chapter 8. I'm not going to read that. But go ahead for yourself in your personal study time and read that Gideon asked the Lord to show him signs that he was really with him because Gideon was so convinced and so discouraged that the Lord really wasn't with him or his nation. He really couldn't believe that the Lord was going to use him the way he was going to use him. And Gideon thought the Lord was actually going to use a greater number of people to save Israel. God really wanted the glory out of Gideon's life. He let him know that I'm just going to use these 300 people because I want the glory. 
and something in our situation, God wants to do some great things in our lives, and we think that we're going to ask this one to help us, this big shot one. Well, for myself in particular, you know, I said, well, I'm going to align myself with this ministry and these people. I'm going to ask them to come and help me in this ministry the Lord has given me. And the Lord won't even allow people to help me because he said, Jennifer, when I do this in your ministry, that I want the glory out of it. I don't want anybody else to say that I did this. I want everybody to look and see what the Lord has done. He won't even allow me to ask for help in some cases from people who are very well established, very knowledgeable about every area of ministry. In some cases, he allows them to reject me and he won't even allow me to ask because he wants me to trust and to know that he can save by many and he can save by few. And he wants to be glorified in my life and where he's taken me. So certainly we find that in the book of Judges that the Lord told Gideon that he's only going to use a small group of people to help save Israel through him. And that's something that we want just, I just wanted to mention about the story because I know many people when they preach from this passage of Judges 6 through 8, they emphasize that the Lord delivered Israel and the Lord only used 300 people. Certainly that's there. But I also wanted you to see today that sometimes we can be linked through our ancestor line to generational things that happen through our ancestor line. We're linked to certain generational curses and they're following us. And it had nothing to do with our personal sin, but to who we have been linked to generationally. Myself, as I mentioned before, I was pretty frustrated, wondering why I was not experiencing victory in certain areas of my life. Even though the Lord had confirmed that he had called me to ministry, he had confirmed it over and over. He's let me know he's with me and he wants me to do these things. But there were some areas of my life that I was still not really receiving victory. And I had to ask the Lord, why is this happening to me? And the Lord had to tell me, Jennifer, that these things, certain people in your family see all that are, have experienced this stuff, and these things that you're going through, these are generational curses, and I want you to claim deliverance from them. I, I want you to claim your breakthrough from this because you're in Christ. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. I had to say that. I had to say, Lord, I'm delivered from this particular curse, oh God. That poverty is not going to follow me, even though it was in my generation. I didn't even think it was in my generation because my mom came out from a well, somewhat well-to-do family. And, and my parents did pretty, they did well for themselves. So I actually didn't even think poverty was in my generation. And certain illnesses and different things, I didn't even think it was in my generation until I spoke with relatives and we're talking about certain things. And we're talking about, for instance, the women in our family, how many women in our family, on my mother's side of the family, have not been married or stay married. And it seems to be a generational pattern. That was a huge pattern the Lord had to tell me, Lord. That's a generational curse. That's a generational cycle that you need to break and to speak deliverance from you for yourself concerned that. So I'm encouraging you today, just not only look into your family history from it for sicknesses such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, so on and so forth. Look at some other generational pattern such as divorce, alcoholism. Look at generational patterns such as poverty, such as murder rate, and, think, and watch and look at that and wonder if this, you are actually linked to this generationally and ask the Lord to for, forgive, for forgive you and for the Lord to give you a breakthrough. And sometimes we all, we, in doing so, we have to actually confess the sins of our generation, even though we didn't actually commit those sins. We have to ask the Lord forgiveness and ask the Lord to close off those doors that those curses were entered in our lives through, that he will close off those doors to us. And that we're just going to cleanse ourselves from this. Israel did that. One of the king of Israel did that, King Jos Josiah. Once he learned of the book of the law 
and the law, the book of the law, excuse me, was given to King Josiah, a young king of Israel. This book was given to him, the book of the law. And when he found out that Israel was not keeping the covenant of God, and that's probably why, most likely why, the Israelites were being defeated at this point. This is further down after Gideon. King Josiah ripped his clothes and got his face on his face before the Lord and repent. He didn't do anything personal to cause Israel to be in defeat, but he realized at this time his people had been involved in generational issues. They were not obeying God's word, and this was causing defeat to come in his life and his people's life. Joshua, after the children of Israel entered into the land and became victorious, God gave him the victory. In the book of Joshua chapter 7, we learn that someone in the Israelites' camp sinned. And because of that sin, that person's name was Achan, and because of that sin, it caused the Israelites to lose in battle. And when the Lord showed it to Joshua that someone in the camp had sinned, Joshua immediately got before the Lord. How long are we going to wait for the enemy to defeat us before we get before the Lord and Lord find out who sinned, Lord? Where's this door open in my life? Is it something generational? Why am I not seeing this breakthrough in my life? Is it something generational that is causing? Is there a door open in my life that's causing this problem to come on me? And no matter how I try to shake it, it can't, I can't de get delivered from this thing. This thing is, is haunting me. It's following me. The Lord is tonight. Get before the Lord and find out if there's a door. Joshua got before the Lord. And once he got before the Lord and repented and got rid of the person who caused this sin to Israel, then the Lord came back and gave Joshua victory in battle. And the Lord wants to give us a victory today in battle. But he wants us to realize that some of our defeat is not personal because of our personal sins. It could be all the way down in our generational lines. There are doors that has been opened that needs to be closed. And we can ask the Lord to close those doors tonight. But the Lord cannot close those doors. The Lord cannot close those doors in your life if you have not accepted him as Savior and as Lord. So I'm going to ask you to bow your hearts and ask the Lord to come in and to save you. That's the first step. We cannot fight against the devil without the Lord being on our side. We need to be on the Lord's side. So please bow your hearts and pray with me tonight. Would you accept the Lord as your Savior? Say, Father God, I thank you tonight for salvation through Jesus Christ. Lord, tonight I turn away from my sins. The Lord, I ask Jesus to come into my heart tonight and to save me and to be Lord of my life. Lord, I turn away from my sin and I, to, I turn towards you in Jesus' name. For those who are believers tonight that feel that you're just being defeated and you know that you accepted the Lord, he's in your heart, you don't know of any other gods that's in your life that you're putting before the Lord. You're serving the Lord as much as you know wholeheartedly, but yet there's certain areas in your life that you're just not seeing the manifestation of deliverance. There are habits that you cannot break tonight. There are issues, financial issues. There could be marital issues and you see passed down from one generation to another. There could be health issues. This one suffered from this thing generationally. And you're saying, I'm a child of God. The Bible tells me that I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. That's what the Bible tells us tonight. 
and I'm not experienced that the redemption. I know I have salvation. I know that I'm going to go to heaven while I die, but I want to be delivered while I'm here still on earth of cancer, of this certain disease that's been plaguing my family line. So bow your, your hearts to him tonight and ask the Lord for deliverance. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, I claim for my, my deliverance tonight, whatever it is tonight, for, whether it be cancer, heart disease, oh God, poverty, or depression, suicide, God, whatever it is that, that has been in my ancestor line tonight, I know this tonight, Lord God, that it is in my ancestor line. But Lord God, you tell me if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. I'm a son of God today. And Lord, I claim my deliverance today from these generational cycles of sickness, these particular sicknesses, these particular issues, God, plaguing our family, God. I claim my freedom tonight because I'm in Christ, oh God. And you promised me that tonight, oh God, that you deliver me, oh God. I'm in covenant with you, oh God, that I expect, oh Lord, tonight, God, my deliverance, oh God. I'm believing you tonight, Lord God, for my manifestation, God. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you for the victory, oh God. Your word tells us, oh God, that you cause us always to triumph. In Jesus' name, Lord, so I thank you tonight for my victory. I close every door, oh God, personal in my life that I have opened for Satan to come in and do things to me. And I close every ancestor doors, oh God, that I had nothing to do with, but they were open, oh God. So this thing that can come on me, God, in Jesus' name, by your spirit, I close those doors tonight, God. In Jesus' name, God, and I claim your victory. And I thank you, Lord, God, I walk in Lord God, help tonight. I walk in the prosperity that you promised me tonight, mentally, emotionally, relationshiply tonight, God. In Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, friends. Thank you so much for your response to my videos on YouTube. And I appreciate your comments on Facebook and how you appreciate this ministry. But I'd like to ask you today, would you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry? This is a television outreach ministry. It goes throughout the United States and it goes into foreign countries. At this time, this telecast is actually has gone to at least one developing nation. And we're asking at this time for your support. If you would prayerfully consider sending us an offering to help the cost of this telecast. God will bless you so richly. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, the scripture tells us that God loves a cheerful giver and that the Lord, he's able to make all grace abound unto you. So today we're asking that the Lord's grace abound unto you as you prayerfully, as you sow into this ministry, it is good ground. And our telecast, the production, is costly. God will richly bless you for this. You can send your donations via debit or credit cards via PayPal at victory, V-I-C-T-O-R-Y-I-N-T, outreach, M-I-N, at yahoo.com. You can also, if you, you would like to send us your prayer requests, please do and that this minister will certainly get an agreement with you, stand in agreement for your healing, or whatever it is that you're in need of today. You can also send your donations to Victory International Outreach Ministry, P.O. Box 463, Hackensack, New Jersey, 07602. God bless you, and I thank you so much for your support and your wonderful comments. God bless you. For all those in our viewing audience, please come on out and fellowship with us. Our next service will be on July 17th, another one August 14th, and September the 18th. Currently, we are only doing this telecast. We're only meeting one Friday out of each of these months. Come on by if you're in the New York, New Jersey, metropolitan area. 
We're in the city of Hackensack, New Jersey. Come on out and fellowship with us. We're going to believe the Lord for your breakthrough. You're in your family. We are meeting at St. Cyprian's Episcopal Church, 269 First Street in the city of Hackensack. It is only about 20 minutes from the George Washington Bridge. If you're visiting, come on out. We'll come and we'll love on you. Fellowship. Prayer starts at 6 p.m. We love to start with intercessory prayer. We're going to believe God for your breakthrough if you have prayer needs. This is also healing and deliverance ministry. Bring the sick, bring the afflicted, and we're believing God for breakthrough in their lives. God bless you. Hope to see you at the next taping. Remember your promise, oh God. Yeah.